West Side. West Side. It's Big Bread Governor. Oh, God. Hotter than the oven, so my 40 caps my gal. And yes, I'm loving her. I'm always shoving such evidence is going to show. Yeah, I'm going to show you something. 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 What's poppin'? We back at it. Another one like the other one. Federal government. No gov, no love. What's up, gov gang? Go on and like this video for your boy. Comment, subscribe, show me some love, man. Free game on how to navigate the court system. What better? These lawyers ain't gonna give it to you for free, so come get it from me. You feel me? Somebody who's actually done it, won it, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I got settlements, I got judgments, no lawyer. But this time, we're going to do how to navigate criminal court. You don't got money for a lawyer. You don't got money for bail. We're going to break it down both ways. You don't want to be like your man, Ronnie O'Neill, that we just saw. Hey, he ended up getting convicted. Tried to represent himself. And in this case, somebody that represents himself has a fool for a client. And he made that statement true. But it's not always true. Everything is case by case. But let's break it down. You then caught you a case, it happens. Now you caught up and they got charges, the state's filing charges against you. They took you down, booked you, processed you. You're in the system. Disclaimer, don't do no crime. Don't do anything that you could possibly go to jail for or be looking like young thug and gunner or be stuck on stupid or can't spend your money. You know what I mean? You got everything in the world, but your freedom. You don't want to be that dude, or don't be the youngster that got your whole life ahead of you. Now you caught a case, you end up getting convicted. Now you can't get certain jobs. Now you can't vote. You can't bear arms, can't protect yourself. You can't get certain apartments. You basically a slave. So disclaimer, man, don't even do nothing criminal, man, to be in this position. But things happen. Sometimes you can catch a case and you're not even in a lifestyle. So, or you in a lifestyle and you know the risk and you caught a case, hey, I'm here for you. And then hopefully you're not doing no criminal activity and you don't have money for a lawyer or money to bail out. That's like rule number one. If you're in a, that type of lifestyle, that's a part of the game. You're going to need bail money. You're going to need lawyer money. So if you don't got that, don't trap. Don't do nothing criminal because you're going to be looking stupid. But anyway, I'm here for you, man. Criminal court, how to navigate it. No money for an attorney. First things first, you caught your case, they ain't going to book you. Don't say nothing. STFU, shut up. You got the right to remain silent. Hey, come on, man. That's rule number one. Every lawyer will tell you that. Every experienced street ninja will tell you that. Don't say ish. Like, that's the best thing you can do at this point. Because they already got you. They already got charges on you. Don't say nothing to help their case. You got to be worrying about helping your case, and your defense. And the best thing is not saying nothing. And the best thing is time is on your side. Because the longer the case drags on, the better chance you have of getting a deal or going to trial and hopefully beat it. So you don't got the money for an attorney. So this is what you want to do. We're going to break down if you had the money to bail out and if you don't get a bill or you don't have the money to bail out. Ideally, the best way to fight a case if you caught one is from the outs. Everybody will tell you that because you got freedom to move around. You can go to the law library as much as you want to. You can contact your public defender as much as you want to. Get on the phone as much as you want to. Research your case as much as you want to. So that's ideally at least have bail money. So if you can't pay a lawyer, you can pick up the slack with your research on how to fight your case, to see what charges you have, to examine how much time that they hold and go over what defenses they have. Now, if you're in custody, same thing. You can go to the law library, but it might only be once or 
twice a week. So you want to utilize that time that they allow you to go to the law library. If it's an hour, two hours, however long they let you get in there, study. Because when the public defender is assigned to you, they got 100, 200 other cases. You're just a number to them, okay? They don't care if you go home or if you go up the river for the rest of your life. So you need to understand that this person works for you. So if you have the knowledge of what is entitled, entails, excuse me, in your case, you can dictate to them how you want them to represent you. Because remember, they work for you. Don't let them dictate to you what they're gonna do or what they're willing to do because they go to lunch with the judge, the DA all the time. So they're gonna try to work out something that benefits them, not you. So the more knowledge you have of your case and of your situation, the better that you will be able to get out of this jam. And then just because this case is similar to yours, or you know people who got caught up for the same thing, whatever the charge is, just because it's similar, every case is case by case. So you and three other people can have the same exact case, pretty much the same exact circumstances. This dude got sent to prison. This dude got probation. This dude beat it. It doesn't mean that that's gonna happen to you. So you need to understand every case is case by case, no matter how similar they are. So you wanna know this public defender, you wanna have to aid them as best as possible because like I said, they got hundreds of cases. So the first thing you wanna do once you bail out and you do get out, contact your public defender, call them, call them. They're probably not gonna answer, leave them messages. When they get back to you, you guys go over the strategy that you're gonna have to defend yourself, to get out of this jam. Whether you did it or if you didn't do it, hey, the whole objective is not guilty and we're trying to get out of here. We don't want this conviction looming over our heads to prevent us from doing what we want to do. So the first things first, ask for the police report. Get all the documentation that the police have against you that the DA is going to use. If discovery hasn't came up, you're going to have to wait for discovery. You want to get whatever evidence the police have against you. If you had your prelim, you, whoever testified against you, get that, get the language in that hearing redacted so you have everything in front of you. Get the minutes right in front of you so you know everything they have against you and what was said against you. Because if you know what they got, you can defend it. That's first things first. Next, go to the law library. Examine things in your police report. Did the police lie on you? Because they do that. They did that on mine. They lied on my police report. That ended up helping me win a civil suit. But we're going to focus on criminal for now because they are known to fabricate the police reports. So you want to find any flaws, discrepancies in that. Do you want to compile your evidence? Do you have an alibi? Were you somewhere else during that time? Do you have a video of the incident or audio? Anything that can potentially get you off? And if the flip side of the coin, maybe you were guilty, you want to have evidence that can maybe shift the reasonable doubt because civil is preponderance of evidence, criminal is beyond a reasonable doubt. So that means if you take it to trial, you just need one juror to believe you out of 12 to hang that jury. The only thing is they might be following you three times and you might have to get three hung juries. So you want to know as much about your case as possible, as much about the charges as possible. And the only way you're going to do that is in a law library. Go in the databases, find cases similar to yours, find defenses. Tell this public defender what you're going to do, what you want them to do. Don't let them dictate to you. Same as if you're in custody and you don't have this, you still have the law library, you still have that same database. Utilize your time. When they come meet with you, you tell them what you want them to do, what they are going to do. Not what they, don't let them tell you. Remember, once they assign you that public defender because you can't afford an attorney, they work for you. You make sure they do what you want them to do. It's your life. They're going to go home. You're in the cell. If they're going to go home, you're out on bail. So your life is on the line, not theirs. Make sure that you know, let them know that you understand that. Okay, next, we're going to just keep going over the case. We're not going to take whatever the DA just throws it. They're going to throw you a raw, shitty deal because they know you're going to try to get out. Don't take whatever. If you, But every case is different. Know 
what your case consists of. This is a broad video because it's not dealing with specific charges or specific incident like my other videos. This is just a generalization of what to do if you can't afford a lawyer and the case process is going on. What good lawyers will do, they'll continue, continue, continue. Sometimes you might have to do that, continue. I know you don't want to sit in jail if you're in custody. And I know you want to get out this jail if you're out of custody, but sometimes time is on your side with helping you because things can happen. Witnesses might not show up. Witnesses might disappear. All kinds of things can happen. So sometimes time is on your side. So you want to keep continuing if possible and hopefully the DA will come with better deals and offers for you. But don't just jump on any deal if you know that you can potentially get off. If you feel really strong that you can beat the case, then take it to trial. Mind you, 90%, pretty much 90% of criminal and civil cases never make it to trial because one, they cost about 50K or in excess of 50K. And two, the DA don't wanna lose just like you don't wanna lose. So they'd rather come to a mutual agreement. If you take a deal, that's still a conviction for them. And if you take the deal, they get to conviction, you might get probation or you might not get jail time, or you might get less jail time than you would have got if you lost in case, if you lost in trial, excuse me. So what you wanna do is understand the ramifications of your charges and what is really you're up against. When you don't have a lawyer that you paid to get you out of that jam, you got to pick up that slack to understand that. So if you know everything that's in this, you will know what type of gambling you want to do. Do you have leverage or does all the chicks stacked up against you and they got you? You need to understand those ramifications and that will guide you on what decision to make, whether it's to take the deal or to move on with the process. Like I told you in my last video, I was facing three felony counts, two holding strikes, over 10 years in state prison. I dictated to my public defenders what I needed done and what I wanted done, and I understood the ramifications of my case and the evidence that I had to prove my innocence that I didn't go all the way to trial, but I told them I would, so much so pushed it to the limit that they offered me from three felony counts to two misdemeanor counts of disorderly conduct, no jail time, no restitution, no victim, no time, $400 fine. From prison to a small fine, what would you take? No brainer, right? But you, I had to fight eight months for that. And I had to know the ramifications of my case. If I knew that I had an inkling or that I was actually guilty and they could have gave me that 10, I probably would have took a, 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 a worse deal, or probation or something. But I knew I wasn't gonna pay restitution. I was, they was gonna have to find me guilty 12 jurors. So understand what you're up against. Don't be like this dude thinking you can just say whatever and you gonna get off. He's, he, he's, he's a creep anyway, you know. Allegedly he killed his baby mom and his daughter and almost killed his son, so. Ronnie O'Neal, I mean, this that's why I showed you this video. Don't be that guy. You're still gonna need your public defender. Don't fall out with them. You might bump heads with them like I bumped with mine, but you still need this person who passed the bar, who can talk to the, the ju judge and jury. You're gonna need that person to talk for you. And they have experience and skill that you don't have. And we need to understand that. Even though I have success in the court arena, I now have more experience. I didn't have that then, so I needed the public defender to, to speak for me, but I didn't need them to dictate to me because they're gonna try to make their job easier because they have a caseload. So we broke it down, STFU, don't say nothing to the police. If you bail out, get out, contact your public defender, get your police report, Go to the law library, understand the ramifications of your case, go from there. Study, research, look up your defenses and tell this public defender what they're gonna do. If you're in custody, same thing. Don't talk on the phone. Don't say nothing about your case. Contact your public defender. Meet with your public defender. When they let you go to the law library, go. 
get your police report together, get any documentation that they have on your case because they have to give that to you. Don't let them tell you they can't give it to you. On my last case, criminal case, that I got out of with a slap on the wrist because I fought it, my public defender didn't even want to give me my police report at first. I had to ask her like four or five times before she finally gave it to me. But once I got it, I saw the flaws in there and that was as part of my defense to attack them. I saw the lie, I had the lies that under oath this guy said that were false. Under oath in the prelim, I had that to my defense. So mind you, that was what I had surmounted against the DA. So when it came time to go to trial, he didn't really want to put his record on the line. So he get two disorderly conduct convictions. It's still a win for him. It's a win for me because I get no time, no probation, no restitution. Paid the $400 fine. And I was done. It was on my record, but now I get an expunge. It's easier to get a misdemeanor expunge than a felony. So I don't want to keep going on all day. I might have to do a part two for this video, but this is how to navigate criminal court when you don't have money to pay an attorney. Use your public defender. Build a rapport with them. Don't be a jerk. Don't bump heads with them because then you're going to be like Ronnie O'Neill with no team and then you have no skill. You're yelling at the jury. It's a no-brainer. You're going to be guilty. So court is about finessing. Court is about professionalism. The only thing Ronnie O'Neill had right, he had a suit on. And this is not court attire. I'm big cooling and booling today. I didn't have no court or no mediation or no situation business-wise today, so I'm chilling. But I'm gonna do a video on how to dress for court. And that's the only thing Ronnie O'Neill had right was his presentation. But when he started talking, he might as well have had this Guns N' Roses t-shirt on. He might as well have had a t-shirt that said, I'm guilty on it. Because he basically said his son didn't see him kill his mom. He basically confessed and admitted that he killed his son's mother and that he shot his son's mother. He didn't word his things right in which an attorney or someone who went to law school passed the bar and has experience in trial and in cases wouldn't have said and wouldn't have said it in that way. He would have said that the child's testimony was null and void. The child's testimony should be stricken because he was not he's not able to confirm what the state is alleging that Mr. O'Neill did. You don't say he didn't see me kill my his mother. Like he was the judge the jury already knows what that is gonna say. But we're gonna cut this short man. I'll probably do a part two how to navigate criminal court with zero dollars. You can't afford an attorney you're going to have to be the attorney. So that means you're going to have to read, study, find a defense, and hopefully, hopefully, you don't mind sitting in jail because time is going to be on your side. The longer you push it on, the better your outcome might be for a deal. And if you do go to trial, I hope that you have your evidence together and you know the ramifications. But don't take my word for it. I'm just a person who's beaten serious charges who's came back and sued the city, won, sued the police, won, got settlements. So don't take my word for it, take my experience for it. I'm here to give you some free game and help you navigate this process because I know it's hard. When I caught my case, I went on YouTube and Google looking for how to represent myself. When my public defender wasn't acting right, that's what I looked for, to see if there was any information out there. And it was no one, it was really only a few. It was one guy who let me know that I could represent myself. And he said that they say whoever represents themselves has a fool for a client. He, he put that out there that that was a company slogan because if everyone represented themselves, lawyers would go out of business. And that's true. Anything is possible. But Ronnie O'Neill proved if you represent yourself in trial, you have a fool for a client. But on the flip side of that, like I mentioned, the Phoenix Shakur beat over 300 federal counts from in custody because she studied and she found loopholes in the law when she was in custody. She went to the law library and she had the mind to get out of this. It's possible. But well, that's all I want to let y'all know. Cut this video. It's getting long. How to navigate criminal court if you can't afford an attorney. 
Go on and hit that like button for your boy. Subscribe to the channel, share this. If you got any questions, man, hit the comments, bro. Tell me what about a charge specifically. Tell me about whatever you're going through in the court situation, and I'll do a video for you specifically. Let's get this channel to 2,000 subscribers, man. It's at 1.1. Come on. I'm giving free game. Let's get it. It's Big Brand Governor. Hotter than the other summer. 40 caps my gal. And yes, I'm loving her. Always shoving slugs.